welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Hello and welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each week I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had when I graduated. In episode 43 of the Graduate Job Podcast, I'm joined by Rob Blythe, founder of graduate recruitment agency Instant Impact, as we explore how to successfully use a graduate recruitment agency. We delve into why you should think about using an agency, what they look for in the candidates, and how they can fast track you through to the latest stage of the recruitment process. Rob takes us through what you need to do to stand out as a candidate, and the importance of spending the time to really think about your career, to why an SME or startup company could be the ideal place for you to start your working life. No matter where you are on your job search, this is an episode you won't want to miss. As always, all links to everything we discuss and the full transcript are available in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash instant impact. Before we start, many thanks to those of you who have completed the survey over at graduatejobpodcast.com slash survey. Your feedback helps me to create the episodes you want to hear. The survey is still open, so if you haven't already filled it in, get yourself over there now. It only takes you about a minute to do, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Right, let's get on with the good stuff. Before we start, though, I want to welcome today's sponsor, which is CareerGym.com. CareerGym is the number one place for you to undertake all of your psychometric tests, which you will face when you apply for a graduate job. You can practice verbal, numerical and abstract reasoning tests, all produced by experts and exactly the same as the ones you will see in the real tests. You can just practice them or you can do them in exam mode under time pressure, and they come all with a detailed explanations and solutions. And you can track your progress and see how you compare against your peers. I've been recommending the site for years to the clients I coach, and it comes very highly recommended. What's even better is if you use the code GJP, that's capital letters GJP for our Graduate Job Podcast, you will get 20% off all of their tests. You can't say fairer than that. So head over to careergym.com, that's career and gym, G Y M, and use the code GJP to get 20% off and start practicing today. Now on with the show. I'm very excited today to have founder and director of Instant Impact on the show, Rob Blythe. Instant Impact to the UK's leading intern and graduate recruitment agency. And Rob, a very warm welcome to the show. Thanks, James. Great to be here. Excellent. And today we're going to cover a few things from how graduates can use recruiters effectively through to some of the benefits of working for smaller companies. But before we do, could you tell us a little bit more about Instant Impact and what you do and also how you came to set them up not long after leaving university yourself? Absolutely. Yep. So Instant Impact are an intern and graduate recruitment agency. As you said, James, um, we've been going for coming up to five years now um, and our aim is to unite the very best graduates with fast growing startup and scale up businesses um, to provide a an alternative to the traditional graduate programs that you get at the big corporates that I'm sure all of your listeners are well aware of. Um, as a background to how we started, it started by myself and business partner Felix Mitchell. We met at university and were underwhelmed, to say the least, about the range of opportunities that were available. So we actually went went travelling, um, as, as you do, uh, and decided at the beginning of going away that we wanted to set up a business together when we came back, spent a couple of months working out what the best business idea was and uh, so Instant Impact was born on Bondi Beach in Sydney. Oh wow, nice place to be. Yeah, wow, be. exactly. And what type of companies do you tend to work with? So um, the businesses we work with tend to be fast growing small biz- small businesses, so um, startups and scale up companies, your uh, Deliveroo's, HelloFresh, um, com- companies, companies like that who are up, up and coming growing growing quickly and really looking to, to develop. The thing that I guess ties together all of our clients is they're trying to disrupt their industry and really do something uh, new and, and innovative and they want graduates to be a key cornerstone to, to what they're doing. So a lot of the roles we're able to offer um, give more responsibility and a wider ranging role than you might often get with other opportunities. 
And most of the clients that I coach tend to be drawn towards the the big milk round type companies that they see advertised around uh, around all their campuses. Mm-hmm. What are some of the advantages you think of, of working for a, a smaller up and coming fast growing company? Well, I think the first thing I'd say is those big milk round companies are absolutely the right place for for a lot of for a lot of people, but they don't work for for everyone. Um, the smaller the smaller companies that we work with offer, uh, offer some very different USPs to those bigger corporates. Um, one of the core components is that you get to work very closely with the founders and directors of the business, so get an exposure to business leaders and uh, f- future future leaders of hopefully large growing businesses. Um, then, in terms of the roles offered, they aren't as well, they aren't as uh, pigeonholed as as you often get at some of the larger businesses. As the s- companies that we work with are smaller, their teams are less well developed, and as such, as a graduate joining the business you can see a lot of different areas and divisions of the of the company so um, if you join in a marketing role you may also get some exposure to to sales or operations and actually get a really wide ranging understanding of how the business that you're working in actually works and develops uh, i think then as a smaller company as well as one of the first people joining the business you have a real opportunity to to stand out it's much easier to stand out at a a company where you're uh, one of a few graduates uh, and one of a few employees total than it is at a company where you're joining as a one of a 300 strong cohort of of graduates so the opportunities for quick progression and and development are very uh, very o- very open to fantastic people who are able to join and really show their worth from from day one and I'm thinking then about applying for um, these smaller companies do um, the graduates need to tailor their applications and, and CVs um, specifically for the smaller companies? I, uh, I'd always be an advocate of taking your time with any application. Um, and when, whenever you're applying to a business, whether it's big or small, I think tailoring, tailoring the CV and tailoring, tailoring cover letter or any information will always go a long way to show that you've actually thought about what the company's looking for. Uh, so, yeah, I'd ab- absolutely say so. Uh, they don't use the same very long application forms and online um, online written questions and and tests as a lot of the big graduate programs do so the barriers to applying are a lot lower but i still think you should put in the time effort and energy to think about what the company is looking for and um, and how to make your cv stand out uh, i don't think there there are any general rules that would be different to tailoring your CV towards a a smaller business than they would towards a bigger business. They're still looking for a lot of the same skills from the individual, but maybe a a bit more of of an ability to take responsibility and uh, work in a ever developing and changing environment rather than um, needing a very clear training program, um, which which you're able to get at the bigger companies. So more looking for more adaptability and uh, being a self-starter. Yeah, absolutely. Self-starter. We hear that word so often from our clients. We're looking for self-starters, people who can get on with it and push push through their own ideas as well as other people's to um, achieve the best results. You mentioned uh, Deliveroo and HelloFresh there. There's two companies that you're working mm-hmm. with. What would the um, application process uh, look like for applying for, for jobs with them? Cool. Well, so I mean, the first first thing is that people register their CV with us, um, and if they look appropriate for the role, or they uh, apply to it on our on the internal pages of our website at instant-impact.com, um, we can then we would then have an initial discussion with the individual, make sure that they're well suited to the opportunity, and they also understand what's offered. We would then recommend uh, the person forward to the company uh, and then they would have a, at le- either one or two rounds of interviews before ultimately, hopefully, then getting getting the job offer. And it's kind of as, as simple as that. I think the other big difference with smaller companies is instead of working on the graduate program, uh, typical structure of apply between September and December and then start the following September, smaller companies tend to operate with we, we have a real need for someone to join and we need them to join as soon as possible. So the turnarounds tend to be very quick. So um, with those companies that we mentioned before, if people are looking to start there and are, inter- and are interested, it could be as quick as 
um, talking to us and then starting a couple of weeks later. Um, but they obviously will. I think the the main the main thing they're looking for is the right person, and companies will always be willing to re- wait for the right talent. It's just um, a case of sooner the better. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, as you mentioned, you think about the again go back to the big graduate schemes with online application, wait two months for them to get back mm. to your telephone interview, wait a month to actually have it. Um, this is such a shorter, sharper process. Yeah. Um, as a result, would you recommend that people apply only once they're ready and available to work? Um, so applying applying to us, I'd absolutely not, not say that. I'd, uh, we're, we're keen for any and all students and graduates to, to sign up, whether they're in their first year at university or um, have already graduated. Uh, the reason for that is we actually offer a summer internship program for current students and so we're able to offer everyone from first year all the way through to people who've graduated something um, and that that kind of carries on on a year-round basis and we're able to offer um, advice like yourself and um, resources to help with the help with the job search um, however in terms of specific opportunities yeah the majority of the majority of them um, are available immediately and so the the applications for the permanent graduate jobs that we work on would typically be a case of I'm available within within a month and therefore I'd like to apply for that for that position. So uh, for those people who are currently in their final year and haven't secured a graduate program or haven't been interested in the opportunities available, what I'd advise that, that they do is really focus on focus on your studies, get the best grades that you possibly can do, and then as soon as you graduate there are going to be a a load of opportunities um, to start pretty much immediately and you definitely haven't missed the boat to get your dream graduate job even if you haven't secured it and friends of yours have. Uh, There's always that pressure when you your friends start getting the um, getting the job offers and you might not have it and you just yeah feel the uh, the weight of expectation um, yeah coming down in your shoulders. Absolutely and uh, we, we see that all the time and I think the advice I'd give to people is enjoy university it's an amazing time of your your life and uh, focus on your studies and and, ex- and extra curriculars um, if you see the right jobs for you then absolutely focus on them but you need to put the time and effort in to to get the opportunities and get the job offers uh, otherwise you could end up disappointed and having put in some time uh, and not ended up with the result that you wanted so spend the time working out what it is that you really want to do and then and then focus on the applications and if if none of the graduate programs appeal don't don't feel like that's the only option there's uh, plenty of your life to be working there's no point uh, rushing into it if it's not the right opportunity exactly yeah you mentioned extracurricular activities there and also focusing on their studies with the companies you're working with are you still finding there's a focus on a minimum degree classification or is that starting is that uh, dependent on the other things that you might be doing at university um we a lot of a lot of companies do really care about academics uh, especially a lot of our clients who are looking for the best graduates from um, leading universities and I think we very rarely if ever hear the company saying that they want want that or it has to be a first class degree but you do we do often hear that they looking for a two one one of the things with a recruitment agency though is that we we can use discretion and if we speak to someone who has a 2-2 or a third class degree but there are mitigating circumstances or um, they were focusing on other very impressive things and they are really well suited to an opportunity we would never view it as a complete red flag uh, and instead would would look to recommend that person and explain to the company that yes they may have got a to two or a third class but we think they're really well suited to the opportunity for reasons x y and z and would thoroughly encourage them to to meet with you you talk there about just having that flexibility and you know being able to have the dialogue with the companies that you work with mm-hmm. i often find that again with the people i coach they're as they're drawn to the milk round companies they overlook working with a recruiter such as yourself mm-hmm. um you know, why would you recommend that students think about using a, a graduate recruitment agency rather than just going directly to the? I think the the, fir- the first thing is that we've got a, a really good range of of clients. So ultimately, if if the recruitment agency that you're working with or the recruitment agency that you're thinking of working with doesn't have companies that you're interested in working with, then 
it maybe isn't the right maybe isn't the right route to go down but if you are interested in that client portfolio they can be a really big help to your job search not only are all of the people that you'd be dealing with well well versed in graduate careers and how to find the right roles but also they know that they know the clients and their recommendation for you to any any one of the clients will will hold a large degree of sway so for example in working with us we only recommend between three and five candidates per role that we run and we run almost all of our roles on an exclusive basis and um, so if you apply through instant impact for an opportunity you're going in much further down the process than if you just apply directly in a one of a hundred or thousands of applicants for the opportunity here you're you have a discussion with us we understand your career objectives and aims and we'll then put forward a personal recommendation to a company at which stage you may go straight into a final round uh, may go into one of two rounds but you'll certainly be uh, one of very few candidates and will know that the company is is really investing the time and energy into into meeting with you and seeing if you're the right person f to for them excellent and from having spoken to some of the graduate recruitment managers at some of the big firms and they're talking about how as you mentioned they're getting uh, 200 applicants for each of the places that are offering yeah um, you know to go in at the final stage is, is such an advantage yeah yeah i think so anyway <laughs> Yeah, oh, definitely. And from the candidates that you see, um, what are some of the mistakes that you you see them making when they when they first come to you um, looking for work? Well, I, th I think CVs is an obvious place to start. Um, good or bad, whatever you think, whatever you think of them, they are a big part of uh, making a first impression with any employer or or recruitment agency. I think so. I think getting that getting that CV right, keeping it brief um well written professional um nice nicely de nicely designed good use of good use of bullet points and not long paragraphs of of prose um as well as really bringing through the key details about your application um having your education towards the top and showing showing the key details without it taking loads and loads of space sorry i'm just Throwing a load of a load of uh, CV advice tidbits in here, but making sure no, make, good making making sure that you're sending it through as a PDF instead of a Word document, so that you can control the format and uh, make sure that none of the no, your your surname doesn't have a red underlined squiggle because people think it's spelt wrong. All of all of the, all of these things do do make a real difference. Uh, the next thing I'd say that really stands people out are those who've had a real proper think about what they want to do um, we we, use, we have a term called career IQ um, and we're, we're really looking for people who have who have career IQ you don't necessarily need to say I know I want to do this and I've been wanting to do this since I was knee-high to a grasshopper but coming and saying I think these are the areas that I'm most interested in because of these reasons um, just brings everything through to a really good starting point for a conversation and then the recruiter can ask a few probing questions and really get under the skin of exactly what it is that you want to do to make sure that we only recommend people for the roles that they're really well suited for. So I think that, that career IQ and thinking beyond my parents did this as a, as a job, my, my friends are applying for it, or it's the only thing that I've seen and going, going a bit deeper um, really does make a difference so I think those anyone who's active on a job search uh, it is a volume game you need to apply to a lot of different things but before you do that I think it's best to spend a week or a period of time to really investigate and research the industries and areas you're most interested in so that when you come to apply you're well versed well versed in those and uh, you can feel confident as well that you're applying for the right thing and there's not something out there that's that's better for you so I love the term career IQ um, so what would you uh, how would what would differentiate someone with a, a low career IQ with someone with a you know really high career IQ I, th I think the the main the main thing is being able to ex express what you're interested in and why and the what the why has to be backed up by the skills you think you already you already have so i think someone with a high career iq is is able to 
look out into the big world of all of the jobs that are available, identify the areas that are most interested, most interesting to them, but then turn that back to a self-aware view on things. So these are my best skills, which is why I think I'd be well suited to this, this, in, this or that industry. Um, I think then someone with good career IQ as well will... Uh, there's an interviewing technique that every interviewer uses, which is probing. So if you receive an answer that you want to go into marketing, the obvious next question is, okay, well, what areas of what areas of marketing? And then when someone says uh, digital marketing, it, you can very quickly tell those who have and haven't looked into every area of digital marketing, and that's that's the thing that really stands out, stands people out as having taken the time to look into look into what they want to do. I think those those with lower career IQ would typically answer the why with well other people are other people are doing it or or I didn't see other any other areas that I thought would be more interesting to me or couldn't compare and contrast different so again using the marketing example couldn't answer the question of why marketing rather than advertising or why marketing rather than sales or uh, th th those sort of questions as as well as someone with uh, a higher level of career IQ. No, that all makes complete sense. I and I think then the, the final point on that is that as a, as a graduate leaving university, no one's expecting a completely finished article. You don't need to know what you what you want to do in your career for your next 10 next 10 years with absolute clarity but we want to see that you've thought about it and um, that given currently available information to you which looks like everything available on the web but not having actually worked in anything for an extended period of time making well-informed decisions based based on that and then having the intelligence to say but things could things could change and I'm, I'm open to hearing different alternative opportunities based on my skill set. And having worked with hundreds of companies I'm sure and sent thousands of graduates through for jobs, what are some of the, uh, what some of the feedback you get from uh, the companies about how candidates might let themselves down when it comes through to those final couple of stages? Oh, good question. I think, um, well, it's weird. Uh, there's a, a wide variety of, wide variety of different feedback always. Um, I think some of the consist consistent pieces of feedback are not having done the necessary re research into into the company, not feeling like the person actually wants the job enough. Uh, I think one thing every in every interviewee should remember when going forward to meet companies is that it is a two-way process, and you should be going there trying to impress as much as you are trying to get information and make sure it's the right place for you to work as well and that's something we tell all of our clients that a good interview process should leave should leave the person going forward for interviews more interested in the role than when than when they started um, so making sure that people have good questions and have well thought out reasons for going forward for for interview also understand the industry that they're in understand the, the company that they're meeting who their competitors are um, etc those are some of the some of the obvious things but uh, beyond beyond that um, for smaller companies especially a lot of it comes down to personality uh, in a big business there's the opportunity to move to a different office or a different floor or a different team if you don't get on with the people um, immediately around you in a smaller company there is no such option um, you're working directly and closely with the with the individuals that you'll be meeting at interview and if they don't feel that you're the sort of person that they would want to work with for an extended period of time, then then that's going to be the biggest indicator of whether whether you're right or wrong for the role. So I think sometimes people think the interview is this big, bad, scary thing um, and actually don't just relax and enjoy it and um, kind of use it as an opportunity to see whether see whether you'd want to go for a drink with the person on the other side of the table. Because that's what, that's what a lot of employers are. Uh, are looking for they're looking for people with the skills to fit into their business but also the personality to be a great part of the team and um, especially when, when that's a growing growing team that's even more important because the company's really intent on the culture of the business and, uh, and and you need to show that you're you're a good fit for that
Definitely. And it's interesting you mentioned, uh, would you like to go for a drink with that person? So back in episode nine, I interviewed um, Alistair Patterson, so the CEO of a um, UK digital startup yeah. called uh, Digital Shadows. And um, uh, there we had 20 or 30 people at the time and they've doubled in size since. And right. one of the parts of their application process at the end is uh, the beer test. So you yeah. take them to the to the pub with the rest of the team and it's, you know, does this person get on with everybody else? Because if you're in a team, as you mentioned, of four or five people and a company of 30 people, if you don't get on with people, there's nowhere, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah, we, we use that very same term, beer test. Um, and, and we're careful not to encourage or say that people have to drink or anything like that. And that's not what it's not, not what it's about. It's more can you survive in a like in a social setting do you get on with do you get on with each other can you talk about non-work stuff and um i think it is really important i completely agree with with alistair and we see quite a few of our quite a few of our clients have a very similar process as as well where the final stage looks like a very friendly meeting be that coffee or or pub and you mentioned earlier about internships and i know when i've spoken to um graduate recruitment managers before they've talked about just how um, how many people who go through the internship process and get around to getting offered a job. Mm -hmm. um, are there any key differences between the internship application process you see with the companies you work for and the the graduate job application processes? Um, so I think the first thing just to say is um, just quickly that we do both student internships which happen over the summer um, and then also graduate internships that happen all year round. Um, so companies companies who are uh, who have very very new roles or graduates who aren't quite sure about the industry that they want to work in and want to take an internship before diving into a permanent role um, both of them have a very similar process to to the permanent permanent roles I just think there are slightly um, slightly easier expectations on the company side because there's a lower commitment uh, for that three month internship than there is for a permanent permanent role so uh, I think they're still looking for exactly the same talent but just maybe there's a slightly lower demand on previous work experience for a for an internship application than a permanent graduate graduate application and with the internships um you have are they are they all paid yeah every single one of our internships is paid at least min at the very least minimum wage um, but we always push for for living wage um and we won't we won't touch anything that's expenses only or uh, or unpaid. Uh, I really not a not a believer in unpaid internships. I think the the students and graduates that we deal with are of um, they deserve to be paid for the valuable work that they do for any company. No, definitely. And uh, what advice would you give listeners who are uh, thinking about doing an internship but um, maybe haven't applied yet? Um, I, I would be very positive. Um, I think. In any internship and any work experience stands you in great stead for future job applications um, and if you really enjoy it as you said before there, there's the opportunity to turn that internship into a permanent job at the end of it so internships are, are now a, an ever-growing and big part of the graduate recruitment process um, so I would strongly encourage anyone who's looking for an internship whether you're a student or a graduate to um, to absolutely apply and um, certainly get in touch with us as well. Definitely. And in the show notes, um, everything we've discussed and all the links to Instant Impact and uh, everything we talked about uh, will be on the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash instant impact. And Rob, time is running away with us. So before we move to the weekly staple questions, maybe one more question. Yep. Um, so you've talked about you're working with all these hot young startups, really fast growing companies. How much scope is there for candidates who get the job offer to uh, maybe get some skin in the game and get some equity uh, with these companies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, that's a very uh, company to company thing. But a lot of our clients have share option schemes. We've, we've got one ourselves. Um, it really depends on the uh, stage of the business and um, and it, it may well be on the on the development path for a lot of our clients if they don't have it already. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think people who are looking at startups and are interested in equity, that's a, a very positive thing for for us. And it's something that that is always a question is always a question that can be asked of of companies as well at this at this size. 
Definitely, it's always uh, it's always good to get if you can uh, if you can possibly get. Yeah, it. absolutely, and I, th- I think the the thing there where we see more is maybe you don't get it day one, but if things go well in your first six months or a year, uh, if there's the knowledge that you can have uh, can be part of a share option scheme or can um, take full full equity, then that's a really great incentivizing factor for for any business, and a lot of our clients do offer that. Super. So, Rob, moving on to our weekly staple questions. Uh, firstly, what one book would you recommend that our listeners could read? Um, it's not directly related to, to graduate recruitment, but I uh, I read and thoroughly enjoyed Steve Jobs' aut- autobiography. I think he's a, a very, well, I mean, it's a uh, incredibly intelligent man who's done, who did it incredibly well with with apple and went through lots of ups and downs and i think especially anyone interested in in startups and scale-up businesses can learn from the um from the roller coaster of his professional career um so i, I think that's a, a fantastic read if if everyone has the opportunity to do so Excellent. it looks i've seen it on the tube and it looks quite a meaty meaty yeah it is it is meaty but there's a lot uh, there's a lot of stuff happened in his in his life and uh, I personally reading it running a business learned a lot from from the different mistakes that he made as well as the obvious and clear successes there's just a really good thought process that come that comes through and I thoroughly recommend it to anyone and next what one website would you recommend that listeners visit well it's a bit bit cheeky but i'd be feeling uh, i feel as i've got to recommend our own our own website i don't know whether that's okay james uh, but yeah, uh, so our, our website www.instant-impact.com um loads of graduate jobs student internships and then a lot of careers advice and a, a really hopefully insightful blog um with great content and resources so anyone looking for student or graduate jobs really recommend you get online there yeah and uh, look at that, the the blog it's got loads of interesting articles on so uh, definitely well worth a listen uh, a read even yeah. and finally rob what one tip should listeners implement today to help on their job search yeah i think the the main the main tip i would i would have is planning planning your job hunt i think it's all too easy to to jump straight in um, and forget the fact that as a graduate looking for for roles you're you're just at the very beginning of of your career and um whilst everyone around you may be rushing if you're if you plan and take your take your time and uh, uh, are well researched so instead of first week just diving straight in and making applications have a look at well, have a look at the industries that you want to work in do a bit of research study um study the areas you what you want to be applying for have a look at recruitment companies etc um, before then planning out the time frames within which you want to uh you want to be making applications it, it, treating the job hunt like a job itself and being being disciplined in saying you know what i'm going to be sitting down for two hours here this two hours i'm researching this this industry and then the next week i'm sitting down for four four hours just making app, making applications to these companies and um if you can be that structured in the way you look for things um, i'm almost certain you'll you'll get the results you want at the end of it that's such brilliant advice and i know just with my personal friends there's so many people who dive straight into a job at the beginning weren't happy with it six months in but are still there you know yeah. five six years later once you start getting paid and the money's coming in it's it's a lot difficult to difficult and, to leave and you don't have that benefit of ta- of as much time to plan your job job hunt when you're in another job um because you're you're working nine till six or whatever uh whatever that job requires definitely so it's well worth putting in the thinking early doors and making sure you're you're heading in the right direction yeah Rob, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. What is the best way for people to get in touch with yourself and also Instant Impact? Uh, so, yeah, the be- best way to get in touch with myself, um, if you head to our website, you've got uh, an about section with my my face and details there, so you can get in touch um, via email. You can also add me on LinkedIn at Rob, Rob Blythe, and uh, there's a phone number on, on our website as well. So if you want to have a chat, just uh, give us a call. Then in terms of the, the business, if you head to our website and uh, click sign up it's very quick and easy uh, to register and then you'll have access to all of all of the information on all of our clients and our, our job board as well rob many thanks for appearing on the graduate job podcast no problem thanks james thanks for having me
Many thanks to Rob for his time and insights. I really enjoyed our chat, and I hope you did too. Lots in there for you to mull over. Definitely have a think about how you rate your career IQ at the moment. And also ask yourself honestly, have you really taken the time to think about what you want to do in your career? A key point for me is for you to think about using a graduate recruitment agency. They can really make the process of getting a graduate job much easier and certainly less stressful. They're there to help and advise you, and ultimately it's in their interests to help you get the job. As Rob said, if they put you forward, you're down to the shortlist stage straight away, and it certainly beats the odds of applying to some of the big milk round schemes. That said though, don't think that this is some sort of easy alternative. In the initial stages, you need to put as much effort into impressing the recruitment agency as you would the company. So make sure you're not cutting any corners with how you approach them or the quality of the CV which you send them initially. They're there to help you, but not to do it all for you. So do the work and make sure you're one of the candidates they can't help but shortlist. So there you go. Thanks for listening. Please leave me a review on iTunes if you've enjoyed the show. Particularly if you're a UK-based listener, as you're certainly lagging behind. I've had an unbelievable 79 five-star reviews from the USA and only 29 from the UK. So UK listeners... Pull your fingers out and get yourself on iTunes. Please leave me a five-star review and I'll be eternally grateful. If you want to get in touch, please do contact me on Twitter at gradjobpodcast or email me at hello at graduatejobpodcast.com. Let me know if you're enjoying the show. I do love to hear your feedback and how you're getting on with your job applications. Please also do check out my short couple of questions at graduatejobpodcast.com slash survey. It'll be a big, big help. I hope you enjoy the show today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.